Thomas and this time I'm building the MPC Galactic Training Ship. This is part of their um, series that is supposed to be transports. Okay. Now if you've uh, seen or built any of the other MPC rockets you'll notice that they tend to reuse a lot of their body styles. And so this is actually also very similar to the um, Martian X2 Invader from their Duck Dodger series, but with different decorations and a few minor differences as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this up, make sure we've got everything that we need. Okay, so we've got the instruction sheet here and the parts list, and inside that we've got the decals and the parachute sheet, you'll have to cut this out. Okay, main body tube here that is pre-decorated. Right, nose cone assembly that is also kind of a, a secondary body tube here. All right, we've got a small parts package that includes the motor mount tube, the fins, shroud line, shock cord, engine retainer clip, um, adhesive dots here for the parachute, and then some decorative nozzles and the launch lugs. So that's pretty much all of the, the small stuff in there. Um, it also has a shock cord mount that's uh, included in here so you don't necessarily have to cut out the one that's in the instructions. All right, then we have the fin can and that looks to be all. So let's check on our sheet here and it looks like we do indeed have everything. So I'm going to clear most of this away and we will get started. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is take the motor mount tube here and mine's got some kind of rough edges here. I kind of take my thumbnail here and chamfer those outward. And then I'm going to take a little bit of sandpaper here. I'm just going to gently sand off that rough edge. That just looked like it was going to get in the way. And then I'll also use this for the forward part so it's not sticking out um, with the motor itself. Alright, so I'm going to mark on this and aft so I know which way it's going. Okay, and then we need to make a mark from the aft end at five centimeters or about two inches right here okay and then at that mark I'm going to cut a small slit okay and that just needs to be wide enough to allow insertion of the engine clip here. So either end works, they're basically identical. And just pop that in just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to dry fit this first. So this should just slide right in there and it does. Okay, and then I'm going to take a piece of tape here. just some transparent tape and I'm going to run it up along the length of that engine clip. And this is just to keep it from sliding back and forth a lot. I'm just going to cut off this excess bit here. Alright, now I'm going to test fit it again. Okay, so if it's really tight and the tape is getting in the way, Go ahead and just remove the tape, but this works fine. Okay, so coming back to our instruction sheet here. Okay, 
Okay, we are going to glue this into our fin can here. Um, and they suggest using plastic model cement. Uh, you can also use a gel type super glue if you don't have the model cement. I'm going to go with the model cement this time. Okay, and here I'm going to run a bead just inside, making sure not to get any in the slot that will be for the engine clip. We don't want it being interfered with. Okay, and then we're going to realign that with the slot and then in one fluid motion push that all the way up until the motor mount tube is flush with the fin can. Okay, and then up here I'm going to add some more glue right along that junction between the motor mount tube and the fin can there. And in this case, it doesn't matter if you get any glue down inside the engine clip slot. Okay, and then next we're going to um, insert this into the body tube. Now, I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit here first. Um, and apply the launch lugs. Okay, so this is showing the launch lug as being 70 millimeters or 7 centimeters from the aft end here of the fin can. Now, that is 4 centimeters long. Okay, so if I subtract that from the 70 millimeters or 7 centimeters there, that's going to leave me with 30. So the first launch lug needs to be 30 millimeters or 3 centimeters from the aft end. Okay, now make sure you've got the aft end. So the, the GTS here and the arrow should all be pointing forward. All right, and I prefer to put my launch lugs along the seam on the decorative panel here. Because that way on the launch pad you won't see it. Okay, so I'm going to mark here three centimeters. And then the second one goes at 25 centimeters. So I need to subtract four from it as well. So that's going to be at 21, which is going to be here. Okay. And now I'm just going to take my hobby knife and scrape off the finish. Okay, now be careful you don't get it too much off. And you don't even need to go the entire length of the launch lug. This is just going to give us a better gluing surface area there. Um, you could also carefully do this with sandpaper. It's just sandpaper unless you've got a little tiny sanding applicator. Um, you tend to roughen up too much of the pre-finished tube there. Okay, so we'll do that and then I'm going to get the other side of this, the launch lugs themselves. Okay, and they too have a wrap finish on it. So it's got a seam there. And what I'm going to do is just take a, a little bit of sandpaper here. This is 100 grit. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you use here. We're just going to roughen up along that seam. Just drag it across. And it doesn't take much. Okay. But that will also give us a better gluing surface. There we go. Okay, so 
here we can either um, follow the directions and put the fin can into the body tube first and then the launch lugs um, or you can do it in the opposite direction here so I'm going to put my launch lugs on first while I uh, is that I just have a shorter tube that way now here um, I'm going to recommend using white glue instead of wood glue which I typically prefer but because this is a pre-finished rocket the wood glue is going to be less noticeable um, if you get a little bit of it on the finish All right, so here I'm going to go ahead and touch this on and we'll pull it back off again and I want this to get tacky So I'm just going to set that one aside, and I'm going to do the same thing for the forward launch lug. Right, and, I, and here you don't want to get a whole lot of glue on here. Less is actually better, so that we don't have this being all soupy all the time. Okay. So there, and the same way I'm going to pull that back off and let it get tacky. Okay, and it only takes 30 to 60 seconds for that glue to tack up. Alright, so I'm going to come back to my aft launch lug once more. And now I'm going to put it back where I had it. And then we're going to line this up with that seam. Okay, so you want to look down from above and then look through it and everything should be parallel to that seam. Right, I'm going to take my forward launch lug here, do the same thing. Alright, now I'm going to check down through both launch lugs. They should be aligned. And looking down on them, also aligned. Okay, so I'm just going to let this sit and dry for about 10 minutes before we go on to attaching the fin can. While we're waiting for glue to dry, we can go ahead and start assembling the parachute. Um, and also we want to check the nose cone here and so this part here is an eyelet this is where the shock cord and the parachute will attach and it's got may have a little bit of flash in here mine does just excess plastic from the molding process so if you've got that go ahead and trim that out uh, but don't cut through the eyelet like that Okay, now you've got two seams here, um, and because this is not really meant to be painted, um, your choices are kind of limited here. Normally I, I, could, I would sand this down on a, on a nose cone and then paint it, um, but even if I wanted to paint this, this feels like it's polyethylene, and so it's not going to accept paint well. Now if you want, you can try shaving off that seam. Um, you probably want a really brand new blade, but you do run the risk of going in too deep and actually nicking it, which I almost did there. So this is kind of up to you whether you want to risk causing more damage to the nose cone than it's worth. That's about as far as I want to take it, I think. Alright, so I'll set that aside. Take the parachute sheet here, open that up. 
And this is actually a really big parachute for this model. Um, and you might want to consider being able to change this out, uh, especially on a windy day. Uh, with, this is an 18 inch parachute and on a rocket this small this is going to drift a lot if there's any wind. Um, I have actually on the uh, X2 Invader, which is essentially the same rocket, put on a 12 inch chute and it works just fine. All right, so the first thing is just go around and cut the dotted line here. Now we're going to need the shroud lines here. And then also this sheet of self-adhesive little buttons. Alright, so in the instructions it shows putting a shroud line between adjacent corners. Okay, so that would be, for example, um, we could have one going from here to here. Okay, and then the, you just continue that around. Um, what I'm going to do is actually put the first one from side to side here, so that uh, it goes under the parachute and this is what Estes does on their parachutes and it has the advantage of preventing some tangling so you know parachutes always tangle but it's a little less tangling if you have um, a middle one going across rather than having three adjacent so just peel off one of these discs All right, and then you're going to kind of try and form a circle within that disc using the shroud line. It does not have to be perfect. Okay, but something along the lines of that. Okay, and then you're going to put that onto the circle in the corner of the parachute. So just squish that in there. All right, now again, I said I'm going to do this one. Um, from side to side, I'm going to pass the shroud line under the parachute sheet here. And then grab another. Okay, and then once again, apply this to corner of the parachute. Squish that in good. Okay, and now for the other two I'm going to go these two corners here and then the same thing on the, the opposite side. So now we have all those assembled. Now to attach this we can use one of two methods. Um, what the instructions show is to gather up all the shroud lines here. All right, find the middle of the parachute, hold that with your other hand. Okay, And then if you pull those taut, if we've done this right, all of the corners should be at about the same spot. It looks like we got one that's just a little bit longer there. That's okay. We can just you can shift the length of these until you get them all about in the same spot there. Yeah, we definitely have one shroud line that's a lot longer than the others. Okay, if you notice there, there's that loop followed by those two. Okay, um, and we can fix that if we need to. Um, it's not that big of a deal if you ignore it, 
But if I tie a knot in that, About the same size. Okay, this looks like still a loose one in there, but it's not too bad. Okay. So once you got your knot there where you want it, you can just cut that back so it's not in the way. Alright, now what the instructions show is to pass all of those loops through the eyelet of the nose cone. And then once you've got those through, you open up the loops once more. And then you can pass the entire parachute, oops, lost a loop, entire parachute through those loops. There we go. All right, so you just take that whole parachute through and then pull this down, okay, until it's taut against the eyelet there. Now I'm not going to do that because I don't like to permanently attach my parachutes. So I'm going to take this back off. All right. And instead I'm going to use a snap swivel here that will allow me to easily change parachutes. And I'm going to come back here and regather all my shroud lines. So I'm starting with an untangled version here. Okay. So once more, gather those loops around one finger. Alright, hold on to the parachute in the middle. Yeah, and I still I right, still got one that's a lot longer than the others here. Um, and it's the same one I just tied the knot in, so Apparently it needs more knottiness. So I'm just going to do the same thing again. I'm going to bring that knot farther down. Okay, what I really should have done is, is check before I attach these shroud lines to see that they all were the same length. Okay, that's going to work. So the snap swivel itself, um, just about any size will work in terms of the rocket's weight and the load capability of the snap swivel. What we need to be more interested in is whether or not the snap part will fit over the eyelet and still be able to move freely. Okay, So you may have to have a bigger snap swivel simply to get the eyelet um, or the snap part to fit in the eyelet of the rocket. All right, so now what I'm going to do is take those loops that we made, pass all three through the swivel end, and then we're going to reopen those loops. Okay, so now I've got the loops around my finger, snap swivel here. I'm going to go ahead and close the snap here so it doesn't get caught. Okay, and I've been holding back here with my other fingers this whole time so that the relative lengths don't shift. Now I'm going to pass the entire snap swivel through the loop. All right. And then we're just going to snug that down onto the snap swivel like that. I'm going to recheck this to make sure I haven't shifted too much. Okay, and if you like where it's at, then go ahead and take a little dab of white or wood glue and put that on the knot. Okay, and just kind of work it down there. You don't need a lot. Okay, but now this, um, after it's dry, will keep those knots from coming undone. Okay, and then when we're completely ready to install this 
and we just open the snap part, put it through the eyelet, and close it up again. Now, if you notice the trouble I'm having here, I've got kind of thick fingers. Um, this can be another reason why you might want a bigger snap swivel is if you can't get your fingers in there to operate it. I finally got it on there. Okay, um, But like I mentioned earlier, this is a really big shoot for a rocket this size. So that one of the advantages of this is if I get out to the launch field, you know, and it's just really breezy out and I don't want this to get eaten by a tree, then I can simply unsnap this one, put on a smaller parachute like a 12 or a 15 inch, and then launch it that way. Okay, so my glue on the body tube and the uh, fin can ought to be dry, so we're going to come back to those. Alright, so if we look at the illustration here, um, it shows that our um, engine clip slot here is between two fins. This one it is not. It is actually right underneath a fin. I would prefer it if it were between two fins. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm just dry fitting this now. What we're going to do is put this in and we want the launch lugs to align between two fin slots. So about like that. Okay. And I still prefer to keep my engine clip as close as I can to the launch lugs. It just gets it out of the way of things like the igniter clips and such when it's on the launch pad. All right. Um, they suggest using a tube type model, uh, plastic model cement. Something I am going to do before we stick this in is on this shoulder, I'm just going to roughen it a little bit with some sandpaper. And this will just give more surface area for the glue to hold. Right, you don't have to do a lot. All right, just enough to take off that smooth finish. Okay, and so now, make sure you've got the correct end of the rocket here. So, I almost had the wrong one. Alright, so this is aft. And here I'm just going to run a bead of plastic model cement right along the inside here. You want a moderate amount um, because you are gluing this to a, a non-plastic. But you don't want so much that you just completely melt the fin can. Okay, so here I'm going to position this so that again my launch lug line is in between two fins and my clip is as close to the launch lug that I can get. All right, and then just shift it back and forth a few times to get the glue to seat well. Okay, and then once again we will let this dry and when we come back we'll put the fins on. Now that the glue is dry on the fin can, between the fin can and the tube, we can go ahead and put on the fins and then also these decorative nozzles here. Now the first thing to do is go ahead and test fit the fins. These have a tendency of being really tight in some of these models. All right, that's relatively tight. Okay. Go ahead, I'm going to leave that in. Um, go ahead and test fit all of these to make sure you don't have one that's going to be a problem. So as we go around here. Now, if you do get one that's just so tight that you can't move it, um, you can either take a piece of sandpaper and just sand down a little bit the root edge, just do a little bit at a time. Um, or you could also take um, either some sandpaper or an emery file, like this one, right? and you can just run that in the, the uh, fin channel there a few times to help loosen things up that way. Okay. Now the instructions recommend using um, tube type plastic cement okay. um, and that's fine but you, you do need to be kind of extra careful 
about those fins sticking. So if, if you got fins here that are already really hard to get in, when you go to glue those in using the tube type cement, they may bind and you may not be able to get your fin all the way up. You might have something like that. So I'm going to show a little bit different way using a brush on type cement. This is much less viscous. And so to do this one, all you need to do is go ahead and put those fins back in. All right, and the trailing edge of the fin should be flush with the fin can. Okay. Now, get something to protect your work surface. So I'm going to use a few paper towels here. Okay, and the idea here, this is really, really runny. And so you can apply this to the juncture between the fin and the fin can. And it will run into the crack by capillary action. Okay, and then once this dries, it's really uh, almost invisible. And so you, you don't have to worry about um, any marring of the fins. Just be careful that you keep it right on that scene. All right. If you do happen to smudge it over or something like that, just don't touch it. Let it dry. Um, and then if, you know, places where you may have over slopped the glue, it won't be that noticeable. If you try and wipe it off with a tissue or a towel or something, it'll actually make it more noticeable. All right, and then I'm just going to flip this around and do the opposite sides. And then the other thing we can do here is to add the nozzles. And for these, go ahead and just use some tube type cement. All right, and so before we put glue in there, let's go ahead and make sure that these aren't going to have any problems. So these should just kind of slide right in. Um, and you don't have to worry about these getting in the way. Um, you can launch and everything with these nozzles in place. They don't have to be removed for launch. Should work. Okay, so here I'm just going to put a little dab of tube type plastic cement in each hole. those right back in. Okay. Um, and those really don't even have to dry. Uh, the glue is pretty protected there. And so our last bit is to install the shock cord. So here you can use the shock cord mount that came in the small parts kit. Um, or you can, if that one's missing, you can cut out one from the front page here. So either one works fine. Okay, now this is my shock cord, and it's got a problem here. Looks like I got caught in a machine or something, and so we've got a 
bad spot and this isn't very long to begin with so um, if this happens in your kit and it's just not usable um, contact MPC or the place where you got the model and see if they can uh, do a replacement part for you. Um, if you've got say a sewing store nearby you can get eighth inch, uh, ah, excuse me, eighth inch elastic fairly easily. All right, turns out I do have a lot. I happened to purchase this about a year ago. Okay. Now, as I said, this looked kind of short to me. Um, I prefer for elastic shock cords to be about twice the body tube length. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick measurement. And you don't necessarily have to be a, buy a big roll of this. All right, you can get shorter lengths at some hobby stores. Um, cloth shops, sewing shops, things like that. Okay, so regardless of which type you use, go ahead and cut out the shock cord mount. And then go ahead and take some white glue or wood glue. And we're just going to run a bead of this along the shot cord mount here. Uh, you want this to be fairly heavy. We want to have a nice sandwich of uh, glue and paper with very little air in it. And so I'm going to take my shot cord here. I'm going to put it on a, a diagonal, so starting at the, the front of the middle section there. All right, and the reason I do it diagonally is eventually this part's going to get folded onto this part, and this way the elastic will lay next to itself instead of on top of itself. Right, I think I want just a little more glue up here. Okay, so now once you've got that in place, Go ahead and fold the first section onto the second. All right, kind of squeegee that around again to get the air bubbles out and get good um, adhesion between the glue and the paper. All right, then the second one, now again, all right, so that's mostly next to itself there instead of making a big bulge on top. And as I squeeze this one around, I'm going to put a curve to it like that. Okay, now we're going to take some more glue. Put that on there. And again, be, you don't want to be sloppy with the glue, but you want a good, even coating. Okay, and go ahead and put this all over. Again, we want really good adhesion here without a lot of bubbles and without excess glue slopping around. And now we're going to put this down inside the tube. This needs to be at least four centimeters from the edge and preferably as far as you can reach. So I'm just going to kind of slide that in um, and then I'll flip it over so the glue side is now down. Well, that was good. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to go down as far as I can reach and then I'm going to press that against my hand here on the inside of the tube. So that now, okay, you should be able to just see it down there though it may be out of focus. Okay, but you need to have that at least four centimeters so that the shoulder of the nose cone does not have any interference with the shock cord here. You don't want to get a shock cord caught between the nose cone and the body tube where it may not eject properly. All right, so that can be drying and while it is drying we'll go ahead and take the nose cone okay, and we're going to take our shock cord here and tie a double knot in the shock cord between the eyelet there. So pass it through the eyelet 
on the nose cone and then just tie a double knot or two half hitches into it. Pull that from multiple directions so we get a good tight knot. And then here you can put just a little dab of wood or white glue on the knot and just work that in. That'll help keep it from coming undone. And then if you've got more than about a quarter inch or about six millimeters on that free end, cut that back but not all the way to the knot. We just want to make sure that this doesn't get caught between the shoulder and the body tube again. Okay. Um, so structurally we're pretty much done. We just have to attach this uh, parachute back on. But since I've got glue yet going, uh, I'm not going to put this together quite yet. Um, instead we'll go ahead and look at the decals. The last thing for us to do is to apply the decals to the nose cone and the fins. And so you don't have to do this. Um, it will fly quite well without it. Okay, so the round ones here, these go on the fins. All right, so as you're looking at two facing fins, what they recommend is one of the delta stickers here on the left fin and a number one sticker on the right. Um, this is your rocket. You can de decorate it however you want. Okay, this long band here is going to go around the top of the nose cone here and then these two long sections here um, it says to put one on each side and it looks like they're going to go on this raised area okay that may or may not work we'll see how it goes here but I think those are actually wider than this thing is but we'll try it so I am going to start with this wrap. All right, and I just wash my hands to help keep the fingerprints and oils down. So I suggest you do the same thing. All right, so here I'm going to lightly attach this to begin with. So I'm just going to hold it there and I'm going to wrap this around. And if I do this right, they should meet up perfectly. They're really close. All right, so now I'm going to hold more tension on this. Fortunately, since it is on plastic, it's easy to remove it and put it back if we need to. Um, that's also the pitfall though, is that sometimes this does not like to, this type of plastic doesn't hold uh, self-adhesive decals very well. All right, that looks really good. Okay, now let's try these guys. So I'm going to try putting this on the raised ridge first of all. And if that doesn't work, we'll put it in between them. Okay, so that works there. All right, but there's some overhang. Now if I just use a fingernail and fold that over, we'll see if that stays on. If it doesn't, then what we can do is take a, a, a nice brand new hobby knife blade, one that's really sharp, and you can run it along here and just trim off that excess. That's probably what I'm going to have to do on that. Okay, then we'll go on to do the other one here in the same way. All right, again, I'm going to use my fingernail here to try and hold that to the edge. I think it's just going to lift itself off again. All right, so I'm a I'm going to let this sit for about a day and see if it's coming up again. If it does, as I said, we can just trim that off with a hobby knife. All right, and then our last ones here. 
Um, I will go ahead and use their suggested application here. The key thing is just try to find a way to keep these as uniform as possible. So here I'm going to use my corner as kind of a spacing guide. And that will do it. So I'm not going to put this all back together um, since I do still have wet glue down inside there. Uh, but once you reattach the parachute, if you haven't attached it permanently, um, then you're going to be ready to go. Now one thing we did not do, and this is going to be up to you whether you want to do it, and that is to add fillets to the launch lugs um, and the reason I, I say you might want to consider this uh, it does strengthen them but at the same time it's going to interfere with the color scheme here so I will add fillets to mine but I'm going to use white glue to do so Okay, and just be sure to wipe off any excess as quickly as possible so that it has the least interference with the finish. All right, but these are going to help strengthen the launch lugs so that you don't end up having a breeze come up and break them off while it's on the launch pad. Okay, so I can just let that dry horizontally, but this is done. So all I have to do is just put the whole rocket back together, and this will be ready to launch in about half an hour to an hour if you're waiting for the launch lug fillets to dry. So do have a great launch and a safe recovery, and please stay tuned for more of my videos.